you're basically competing with with all the people who recently got laid off from like Disney and Universal. <laughs> I know, encouraging words, right? <laughs> all right, hey guys, how's it going? My name is Chris Chen. I'm a concept artist in the theme entertainment industry. Uh, this is a FAQ video for those who are interested in being, con being concept designers in the theme entertainment industry. Uh, keep in mind that um, I worked mostly as a freelancer uh, and these opinions are just of my own and from my experience, they may not be true for everybody, okay? Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first question. What is the process like working as a freelance designer? Do you usually get hired by a company to come work in the office for a while or is it mostly virtual? This will probably changed, uh, will have changed because of the pandemic and is there an interview process involved? Um, great question. Uh, so most of my freelance projects are mostly virtual. Um, it's, I guess, just quicker that way. I've worked with clients in like uh, Mexico and Canada as well as the US. Um, I mostly lived in California, so you know I worked with clients all over their country and stuff. Um, occasionally, there will be in person. Um, I might drive like an hour up to Los Angeles and work in the office. Some studios prefer that. Some, they, it, it's okay for you to work at home. Um, there's not really an interview process. Mostly, the process goes like this. It's like, hey, I heard about you from a friend. What's your availability? Are, are you busy? And then if it's like, oh no, I'm not busy, I'm available. Then it's like, okay, can you tell us your rate? And then you have a phone call, create a contract, and then you're off to the races. So a lot of times uh, the freelance kind of life is like, hey, are you available tomorrow? We need to start working ASAP. They usually hire out freelancers when um, <laughs> they really, they really need help. You know, there's an emergency, like their own in-house house staff can't take care of it. So they need outside help, outside specialists to come and help them finish the artwork for their big presentation or something like that. All right, next. What is it like when you're on an assignment? Does the project manager simply ask you to create images of what you think the project should look like, or is there more instruction involved? Do project managers tend to be strict or does it just depend? How much communication do you have with the main project team? Uh, great question. So especially if it's your first um, time working with this client, most of the times clients will give me a 3D model to draw over. Sometimes they give me art styles and image boards. Um, they're really specific because it needs to match up with all the other artwork and, and stuff. Uh, very rarely are you asked to kind of create with creative concepts. Uh, most of the times you're kind of just like a, a hard gun. You're, you're there to, oops, uh, <laughs> I don't want, I shouldn't talk about guns and stuff, that's political. Um, but you're, you're there to just kind of do the work and the creative direction usually has already been established. Um, there is not much communication with the project team. Uh, I usually just kind of work in my own silo, work by myself. Um, sometimes it is nice when I do get to talk with the other team members, kind of feels like you're part of the team, uh, but it's mostly independent, yeah. Okay. Even in non-pandemic times, are there slow periods between projects? How long do they usually last and how would you minimize these slow periods? Um, yep, there are slow periods, um, maybe a couple of months. Um, and when you're busy, it's also like really busy for a while too. I would say have other income sources. I know I had like an Etsy store, I still do. Uh, right now, how I'm getting by is I'm teaching. And teaching is cool because there like are an abundance of kids who like drawing, right? There's an endless supply of kids who, who want to learn how to get good at art. Um, whereas there's just a handful of theme parks that are being built, um, have multiple income sources, have other jobs and stuff while you know, you're know you starting out freelancing and stuff. Okay. Is it difficult to get a full-time position? Should I anticipate working freelance for a while? Uh, that's a really great question. Um, so the thing about the full-time position, even if you were to get a full-time position at like Disney or Universal, like a big company like that, 
Sometimes the full-time positions are like contract based and they might only last like one or two years or two to three years. So uh, just because you have a full-time position, it doesn't guarantee job stability. Uh, you still end up getting laid off when the project is over. Nothing personal is just like, imagine you're shooting a movie, right? When the movie is done, all right, everybody is, it's not like you're laying them off. But it's like, hey, the movie's done. There's nothing to do. So let's say you're building like Epic Universe or something like that. When the theme park's done being built, it's like, okay, we're done. And then, you know, everybody's like, go, because there's nothing else to do. Um, so that's kind of how like the Hollywood industry works. And um, I guess for theme parks, it's just kind of similar. Um, only difference would be Hollywood tends to have like a union and stuff like that. Unfortunately, we don't have a union in the theme park industry uh, for like... Uh, you know, like uh, health insurance and stuff, unfortunately. Um, so I was gonna say, yeah, there are people who have full-time jobs um, and there are success stories and have a little bit of survivorship bias, meaning I also know a lot of people who don't have um, full-time jobs or they're not doing that well freelancing, but it's not like they're going on LinkedIn and, and tell, talking about it and stuff, um, whereas, on LinkedIn, like when you do get like a full-time job, you post about it. Hey, I got a full-time job. Everybody likes your post. Everybody sees it. And it's like, wow, it looks like everybody's getting jobs. But, um, you know, if someone's not getting a job, you know, they're not posting about it. So you don't hear about it as much, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I was going to say freelancing. Yeah, go for it. It's going to be tough because you're basically competing with all with all the people who recently got laid off from like Disney and Universal and have a bunch of experience. So it might be a tough job, job market out there, but uh, yeah, give it a try. <laughs> I know, encouraging words, right? <laughs> okay, uh, right now I'm working for a company, but I don't feel creatively challenged by the work. I spend what little time I have working on my portfolio pieces. Uh, right now, they're almost completely IP-centric because I'm starting out, it's easier to draw from what I know. However, I'm about to start a new project that will be more freestanding and original in concept. Besides creating new portfolio pieces and reaching out to designers like yourself, what more would you recommend I do? Uh, fantastic, yeah, that's great. You're creating uh, a non-IP-centric portfolio piece. Uh, I know I created a lot of IP stuff like uh, Sugar Rush or Tron or stuff like that. You want to be careful with that. Um, I heard that it does stop some companies from hiring you, especially like Disney and Universal. I think there's like a legal reason. Like I once sent an email to a friend who worked at Universal. You know, I, I guess I didn't know her that well. I met her in the TA, but she told me like, oh, I'm not allowed to look at your email. You know, I, I had to like delete it immediately or, or something like that. I think it's because like, Maybe if she sees it, then like if they build that similar to your concept, maybe there's legal stuff. They don't want to get sued. So like there's a policy where they don't want to look. I'm not really sure. This is all alleged. This is all speculation. I'm not sure. But I will say that if you create um, non-IP portfolio pieces, kudos, keep it up, keep doing that. You know, I'm trying to do non-IP stuff too. Um, you know, like pirates, fairies, you know, medieval castles, you know, sci-fi city, you know, all these themes are like non-IP centric. Um, besides reaching out to other concept designers, right, you could uh, reach out to companies, of course, right? So Google theme park design firms, companies like Thinkwell, BRC, uh, Legacy GGE, Legacy, uh, what's their name? Um, um, did I already said uh, Hedema? Yeah, yeah, Google theme park design firm, contact them. A lot of times they're looking for work and stuff like that. All right, next question. What is the most challenging part of being a concept designer for theme entertainment? Um, so this will vary from person to person. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think one thing for me is just the spontaneity of it. Sometimes there's no work at all, and other times there's a lot of work where you're working like 10 hours a day. And um, 
sometimes that can be really bad for your health because like when you're working like 10 12 hours a day it's really really easy to get like carpal tunnel and stuff and like after the project i'm like oh shoot my hands i need to go see like a acupuncturist or something like that get my get you know or massage therapist get all of like my tendons and muscles uh, release because they're like holding the, the pen all day. Steam entertainment is a very cyclical industry. Um, sometimes there's a lot of work, sometimes there isn't. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you recommend my next, next, my next steps to become a concept designer? Uh, yeah, keep, keep putting out new work, man. Uh, stay on top of mind, art station, post on art station, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I know there are times where I've gotten projects like people are like, hey, you know, do you know anybody who can do this? And if I'm too busy, I'll be like, oh, uh, you know, you can try this guy, Kevin, you can try this guy, Mark, whatever. And and the people who I recommend often are times like I just saw their post on LinkedIn like a couple days ago. So like they're like the first person I think of. So, um, yeah, keep working at it. Um, stay on top of mind and, and best of luck. All right, you guys, hope you guys and like, like this FAQ. Um, tell me what you think in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm thinking of uh, kind of transitioning, putting more content in my regular YouTube, personal YouTube channel, uh, because I wanna put more art related stuff, uh, not just theme park work. Uh, let me know what you guys think. All right, thanks guys. See you next time, bye.